everybody Dale Strohshine so today we're out on the Bay of Green Bay and of course you know the Bay of Green Bay is notorious for monster smallmouths and uh, some areas that you really want to look at what I always tell everybody is this if you're coming to Sturgeon Bay number one stay mobile got to keep moving many of times when you pull into a spot you're gonna get fish in those first two three four casts if they're not there you got to pick up and move and what we're looking for is just different rock bars these fish here primarily relate to these rock bars it's a lot of days they'll be up on the top and certain days they'll be off on the side so you got to play it you got to work a little bit all so when you're making those moves kind of come in get the lie of the land with the graph look what you've got in that area so what I want to do is I'm gonna work that eight foot top and then maybe jump over to that 10 11 foot and then get on the break as well or get off the flat because a lot of times in that 14 foot range is where you're going to find the rock sand transition I'll move out on that sand because there's certain days they're just sitting out on the sand as well all right so when you're fishing the Ned rig and by the way it's one of my favorite techniques up here in the Sturgeon Bay area the one thing that I do maybe a little bit different than most is first of all long casts can't say enough about that how important that is it's imperative that you're making contact with bottom but where I make a little uh, change in how I work this as far as cadence it's just one slow turn of the handle just pick it up the line one slow turn and then wait for it to hit and you want to watch that line always what I'm doing is I'm watching the rod tip down that first 20 feet and watching that line and as soon as I see that bow lay out I know I've made contact with bottom and that's where I pick up that line now you're not going to get like a traditional style bite where you get a tick what's going to happen is when you go to pick up the line you're just going to have resistance and uh, at that point you want to make sure you're setting the hook here we go there's one i'm a tight drag guy so if they need line a lot of times i'll just give them line this way because if you don't got a tight drag you don't get a good hook set on them he's coming here chris this one doesn't know he's not a giant. Yeah, I know. When, when he came up, though, he really he showed me that back, and I, I thought he was going to be bigger. I mean, he's still very respectable for uh, the bay. And, you know, I always got to keep it in perspective because there we go. That's, nice that's a nice fish, man. Way to go. All right, that's a thank good one, you. Bro. Get him. Yeah, he's, he's still very respectable. That's a solid one. So, and of course, you know, textbook hook set on that. So what happened there, just real quickly, I cast out, the bait hit the water, and that's where having a line that you can see is so important because I saw the line just take off. So I immediately blind set because I knew that fish had it. And if you don't, these guys will get them down in the gut so quick and uh, then it's, you know, and I'm telling you what, I look at these guys like my kids, man. You, you know, you gotta protect them because you gotta always look out for the best interest of the resource. We'll let him go to see another day. All right, there he goes. The heads that I like to use, now everybody's got their own thing, I get it. I'm just giving you my personal preference. I'm using a Berkeley half head, and a lot of times I'm throwing as light as I possibly can because we're dealing with this goop. It grows on the bottom of the lake, and if you go to heavier jigs, the problem is before you even start, you're already over because the jig is so heavy that it penetrates down into that and the jigs get all gooped up. The other thing is a lot of these fish here relate strictly to rock sand transitions. But when you get in these bigger rocky areas that I like to fish and where these fish like to live, more importantly, I want to go to that lighter jig because it enables me to stay up on top of those rocks. Now it's also important to watch that line, like I said, because you're skipping it along the bottom. So as soon as you see that jig hit, you're gonna see that big bull start, and that's when you wanna pick up that line again. And one thing with this cadence is I'm keeping my rod pointed directly at my bait. Now, you're not gonna use the rod to move the jig here. What you're doing is you're actually using the reel. So all I'm doing is just picking up that line. And the advantage of this is, is you don't fatigue. And the other thing is where you get an advantage is you're always in that hook ready position to set that hook, which is really nice.
Good old med rig right there. You know, eighth ounce out here and we got a pretty good wind right now. And uh, you gotta work it slow, but it can pay big dividends.